Hello world, welcome to my new course on Linux. Um, here, I know there is a quite a lot of things out there um, regarding the how Linux works and uh, how to install it and how to work with that one. But to be honest, I found out most of them are just not going too much into details. Um, and I will try to change it, let's say that way. Um, I want to give you all the beauty of the Linux that you can understand, that you can apply it on your day-to-day uh, -day work. And it does not matter if you're working as a Linux system administrator or if you're working as a DevOps or engineer out there. I think these course lectures will be very useful. And also, it doesn't matter if you're really starting from the scratch, like uh, first time you're getting into this topic or you're... Um, mid-level or really senior experience, experienced um, system administrator, I think there will be something for anyone from those group to find out and to learn new stuff. I imagine this or plan this to start through the short Linux history. And if you think that you already know or understand this, you can skip this part, this lecture, uh, even though if it's too boring for you, you can also skip, but my highly recommendation would be to really spend uh, next around 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes and get about the Linux history because this will uh, help you quite a lot later when we uh, dive into more technical lectures. So if we start from 1969, um, two hackers named Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie, uh, together with the other people, of course, they're in the same team working in the Bell Laboratories or the Bell Labs, developed operating system called Unix. At that time, this was like huge, huge step forward. And we'll not go into details uh, seeing now and explaining why, because it could took us days on, uh, on the details. But what I would recommend to you, uh, you can find on YouTube discussion between Ken Thompson and Brian Kernigan, where actually Ken Thompson mentioned that he developed operating system in a three weeks. You can imagine this. This is huge. And that sort of the magic we are using today uh, in our day-to-day -day work, it does not matter if it's on your home machines or if it's in a cloud or... You know, it's all, all around the world in, in, in that sort of the shape. At somewhere at the same time, uh, again, the, another hacker called Richard Stallman actually started working on something known as a GNU. Short for the GNU is not Unix project. And out of this project, there is a two very important mantras or I would say folklores that um, born uh, free software foundation and even more important, or I cannot say more important, that's importance is on the same level, GNU public license. And this GNU public license you will probably find on probably mostly everything today, what you touch uh, regarding the open source and especially free software. So when we're speaking about Linux, um, we cannot say that Linux itself is an operating system, even though we call it these days mainly, but it's very important to understand that Linux is name for the kernel itself. So you would probably ask what the kernel is. So kernel is sort of the glue between the bare metal, the hardware you have out there, your PC or laptop or um, Android or the iOS phone. Um, and the user space or the space actually intended for us as a users to to develop our applications and to actually doing our day-to-day -day work. Kernel itself have two main uh, pieces, which is a system space and the user space. In system space, kernel actually speaking on a machine language, I would say, uh, with the hardware itself, with the bare metal, but also through, through its own API, it's then exposed the kernel itself to the through the user space to end user or to us, I would say. Around the same time, um, 
there is the other products called BSD and Minix. And why it's important also to mention Minix, um, I, can, I can even show you here that Minix, if you visit minix3.org, you will find out that this is a free operate, uh, it is a free open source operating system designed to be highly reliable, flexible, and secure. And of course, you can read this on your own. But what is very important here to understand and to get, there is an, an book which I would highly recommend if you have a time to go through it. So you do not need to pick up all details immediately or not even uh, need to understand everything out of the box. But this is a really great book written about the operating system designs and how actually everything working under the hood. It's written by uh, Andrew Tannenbaum, a professor which actually uh, developed these for his own student to teach them how operating system works. Um, if we go back to our presentation, uh, we can see that around the 1990s first, uh, student named Linus Torvalds started developing Linux kernel on his own. And he just was in a right place, in a right time, a right place, I would say. Uh, he tried to run at that time some operating system which he had at his hand, but none of them actually satisfied his needs. And he already had enough knowledge and enough resources, I would say that way, uh, to start developing his own Linux kernel. Uh, the the mascot or the uh, logo for the Linux kernel is the well-known tux or the penguin. And that's also coming from the great love from Linus Torvalds to those creatures out there. Uh, but what he done and what is very important uh, move in his development, once, once he developed like, I don't know, a few hundred line of codes, uh, he actually shared this on existing internet, let's say in that time, network of the other hackers who were interested into how operating system works. And the rest is actually history because people found this very useful. And they started to contributing on his project. They started to so this get this momentum of that this could be a big thing. Even though Linux Torvalds did not believe that personally, this is ever going to become a uh, huge as it is. And now we can see this product everywhere around. But for Linux to become an operating system, and as it is a just kernel, so as mentioned, this glue between hardware and users, there need to be something in between. So there need to be something in between here to uh, properly understand all of these and solve the complexity between all these system calls. And then we getting back to Mr. Richard Stallman and Free Software Foundation and his GNU project. Actually, GNU tools together with the Linux kernel mean called, it should be called these days, just in a, in a sort of credit to all, all what is done in the past, it should be called GNU Linux, making a so-called Linux distribution. And Linux distribution is actually an operating system as whole, right? So when we're speaking about mostly known and, and uh, credited operating system out there, it is a Debian, Red Hat, Slackware, and I also add the Gen2 and Arch, at the end also FreeBSD and OpenBSD, but do not mix them with the Linux. So for now, let me just stay on these five and let, let, let me show you uh, how you can actually recognize this and how you can actually recognize other distribution which is derived from those. So if we go back and search for the Linux distribution tree, and I would also recommend that you open or search like sites which are um, legit and not opening some other thing than let's say in this moment than Wikipedia, um, we'll get to, we'll find there a picture which probably is in SVG format or something because it's a browsable and um, it's really nicely 
comparison and tree for the how Linux um, survived all these years and what's happened in, in there. And you can see it's now almost till the 2023. So um, this means we have almost full history here, but why this is important. So if we get back to this old days and almost uh, beginning of the Linux, in 1992, there was a product called SLS and out of that is derived Slackware. Uh, the Slackware is one of the really the, the oldest distribution which keep all the mantra or all the um, philosophy of the Linux is itself and even have some roots in the Unix. So that's why we are going to learn this operating system as a main one. I can hear and I understand that you will find probably all over the internet that this is an old operating system, not in use and so on. But believe me, this is the best operating system to learn Linux in a proper way. If we scroll down and following the year timeline, we will see the Debian also is somewhere around 92-93 started to um, look the, the world for the first time and out of Debian why it's important uh, if we search through this picture we can search for the Ubuntu probably the one of the main known operating system between um, people who just starting with Linux these days uh, okay this is not an Ubuntu but here is an Ubuntu so Ubuntu is an operating system which actually derived from the Debian itself. So if we follow back to the root of this one, we will get back to Debian, right? And we can see that quite a lot of other distribution also developed from Ubuntu itself. So this is how this open, the, the magic of this open source. And um, I would not say uh, free software in this, this moment for the Ubuntu, but how the open source world working. And then if we scroll down a bit more, we will find the Red Hat. So as you can see, and let's say for the Red Hat, if you search for the CentOS, you will find CentOS as an operating system which get from the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. These days, I think the one which is actively developed is a CentOS stream, and there was some changes in the past few years, so we'll again not go into details here. Um, as mentioned to you, there is a uh, two others distribution also worth to mention as a pretty much old and great one. The one of them is Gen2 and the other is Arch. I was using both of them. Gen2 is really highly customi custo uh, customizable distribution. Uh, you can set it up on your needs, but it really requires some time to learn it in a proper way and then to, to discover its magic. And the Arch, if you want to have an operating system with a bleeding edge software, whatever it is, newest stuff into the Linux world, you can find it there. And worth to mention, I would even put them as the first one, but I just did not want to, uh, because the le lecture is around the Linux history, not too much about the Unix stuff. So we need to mention FreeBSD and OpenBSD. And also I was reading that these days there is a new version of the FreeBSD, which is uh, version 14, upcoming beta version. Uh, if I'm not working with Slackware uh, and not using it as a my main distro, I would probably uh, use the FreeBSD. And also the other one is the OpenBSD. So whenever I sort of open a, or uh, if someone mentioned the OpenBSD, it's really great <coughs> operating system, really uh, oriented on the proactive security, integrated cryptography, and some sort of the father of the open SSH software, which coming from the OpenBSD, which we will use on Linux on a daily basis. So I hope that you actually like this format. Uh, and then I would ask you to really um, like the lectures especially put your comments if you want to uh, if you want to correct me in something if you have some other information that you would like to add it would be also great if you shared with your colleagues um, that if you find out that someone will benefit from these lectures as well and of course if you want to keep uh, updated on my new lectures which will come in the next month uh, please subscribe on my channel and this way you will be able always to 
uh, actually get the new information once when I publish a new lecture. So since then, all the best.